three uh, different you know, therapeutic spaces, if you will, that we're talking about. One is the patient who is castration naive, never had hormonal therapy, that has a biochemical relapse. Uh, so it doesn't have metastatic disease, just has biochemical relapse. So for those, uh, still the standard of care would be to either observe the PSA and not start hormonal therapy or start hormonal therapy. So there's really not a lot of new data about adding new treatments on top of hormonal therapy uh, for those non-metastatic uh, castration naive patients. Now, th where the major advances have occurred in the last three years have been for those patients with metastatic disease who are newly diagnosed, um, uh, where the standard in the past used to be uh, just uh, hormonal therapy with uh, LHRH agonists or combined engine blockade with um, um, earlier generation um, uh, antiandrogens, for instance. And uh, in the last few years is when you had the results of the charted study, which was uh, the addition of the cetaxel to patients with high burden of disease. Uh, actually, that study included patients both with high burden and low burden, only the patients with high burden of disease had benefit. Um, and also the, the studies that included abiraterone. Um, and those were the, the <coughs> latitude study and uh, uh, stampede study, a subset of the st stampede study, which was a very complicated study with multiple arms. But basically, uh, the benefits were seen uh, in charted with, with the cetaxel for patients that had high burden of disease, uh, which meant uh, at least you know uh, several bone metastases and, and uh, or visceral metastases, uh, and then. Uh, <coughs> For abiraterone, for instance, with latitude, they had to have four bone metastases um, in the castrate-naive metastatic setting. So, so those are the types of patients that would benefit.